strategic affairs subscribe to our youtube channel click the bell icon for updates you're watching strat news global i'm amitab revi and this is our weekly flagship show the talking point A warm welcome to all our viewers who are joining us live no matter where you are across the globe and a welcome to those viewers who will pick up the stream later on our YouTube channel. We are also welcoming for the first time on Strat News Global from New York, uh, Jennifer Zhang. She is a video creator of a YouTube channel, very popular one both in Mandarin and in English called Inconvenient Truths. And she's the author of a book called Witnessing History. One woman's fight for freedom and a Falun Gong. Jennifer, thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure having you on, especially so early in your morning. Thank you so much for having me. And Yato Wang also joins us from New York. She's been on Strat News Global before. Welcome back, uh, Yato. Thank you for your time again early in your morning. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure, Zaz. Jennifer, just coming to you about uh, the developments over the last month consider, uh, about uh, Peng Shui. Now, post uh, her post being taken down from Weibo very shortly and all the developments, she has posted a so-called retraction. There have been pictures, videos of her in Beijing restaurants, in a kids' tournament in Beijing as well. Why, Jennifer, are you not convinced that they are genuine in terms of what she's expressing, in terms of that she's free to do that and she's not being coerced in any manner? Because, you know, she risked her life when she posted first in Chinese on her verified Weibo account, um, I think November the 2nd. She clearly knew she was post, uh, uh, risking her life. So she said something like, I'm like a, a worm flying towards the fire to just to uh, get my voice out. And she was so frustrated about uh, Zhang Gaoli's affair with her and she because she was forced to have sex with her and she got abandoned and actually Zhang Gaoli's wife helped Zhang Gaoli to abuse her sexually when they had sex in, in his house three uh, years ago. So, so the most important issue for her is the sex abuse she got from Zhang Gaoli. So that's the core issue of this matter. If that had not happened, he wouldn't have gone to the Weibo to, to express his frustration and despair anyway. So when she came out, people would naturally know whether your allegations are true. If yes, Zhang Gaoli should be punished. If no, you are making lies about this high-ranking man. You should be blamed. So no of those uh, video or photo appearance address any of these core issues. Of course, people are not convinced. And the second point is because I myself was uh, detained in a female labor camp in Beijing for practicing Falun Gong back in 2000. So I knew very well how fake everything uh, the, the, Chi the Chinese Communist Party put would be. Even when I was in the labor camp, even when other police officers from other police in the same system came to our labor camp to visit, it was still put up many, many fake shoes, even to cheat their fellow, you know, policemen or their, uh, like, um, the, the authorities because they want to be, the labor camps are all also given schools and uh, grades. They want to move higher in their grades so they can get more money. So everything inside China is faked. And because she is in China, she, her own safety, personal safety and all her family's safety and even her family's livelihood depends uh, in the hands of the CCP. Of course, she's not free. Uh, Yacho, I mean, uh, you have gone on record to say uh, about the situation in China and especially with uh, Peng Shui that if you speak out and if you're speaking critically of uh, Chinese government or uh, certain officials, nobody is safe. It doesn't matter how famous or how big a star you are. 
Yes, I mean, because this happened to many other people before, whether you know, you're a human rights lawyer, you're a journalist, you publish the articles to criticize the government, then you get uh, disappeared, then you re reappear in some video confessing to your crimes. But on the other hand, there are also, you know, like very well known celebrities, like movie stars, like billionaires, they did something the government doesn't like, then they got disappear, then they reappeared on some program saying, oh, I'm doing very well, uh, you know, uh, don't worry about me. So this happened many times before. That's why, you know, we instantly know, you know, the videos uh, where Peng Shui appeared were not genuine. Right. Uh, I know, Jennifer, I'll just come back to your uh, particular experiences. But you have analyzed in your shows and on your uh, social media timeline, you've analyzed Peng Shui's posts and you feel that there may be some secret signals that she's sending uh, or an SOS for that matter. Could you explain that to us? Yes, because in one of her photos, she was holding a panda in her hand and there was a Winnie the Pooh behind the panda. Because in Chinese, I think it's not my analyst actually, many Chinese people mm -hmm. were talking about that because in Chinese, a panda is, is regarded as a national treasure, is the most you know, precious animal in, in China. So national trade, national treasure, and the pronunciation in Chinese is Guo Bao. And also the yeah. national uh, security guards or national security police is also called Guo Bao. It's a uh, land Bao, it's Bao Wei security. So uh, Panda and uh, secure, security police, the Chinese pronunciation is exactly the same. So when she is holding a panda in her hands, people, uh, obviously for Chinese people, they believe she she means I'm in the hands of pan of Guobao, of national uh, security guards or security police. And uh, when you the pool is behind them, and I think everybody knows uh, when you the pool represents uh, Xi Jinping, even when you the pool's image was banned or also became a sensitive word in the China's uh, international uh, internet environment to be censored. So everybody understands what that image represents. So when her photo came out, like, you know, out of all the animals and out of all the other kind of photos, why she chose to hold a panda and a photo behind her of Winnie Pooh. So people understood that could be a hidden SOS message she wants to send to the world because she is controlled, she is monitored, I guess, 24 hours now, and she doesn't have freedom. So this is the only way she could choose to express some kind of hidden message. And she could be hoping that the outside world could get it. Yacho, a couple of questions from our viewers. Uh, this is from Omkar Dadwe. How come these events are coming to light only in the last few years? Is it because there are more eyes watching China or is it a failure of the Chinese state? And another question from Hari Gautam, how common is a sexual abuse among women in China? We don't often hear about it, but then we don't hear about a lot of things in China. Uh, the first question, uh, you know, why, you know, we just hear about it in the past few years. I do think uh, that, you know, Chinese government is doing more and not more of those videos, uh, you know, having some uh, activists, they arrest and then put them on the video saying, oh, I did this wrong. I defamed my country. I confess to my crimes. I think this is relatively a new phenomenon in the past several years. But on the other hand, I agree with the viewer that, you know, there are more attention on China. So, you know, those kind of forced the confession or forced performing, I'm very happy, I'm all well video, uh, you know, there's more attention on this, uh, on this issue. Uh, second issue, a uh, second question, whether, you know, uh, there are a lot of sexual abuse happening in China? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, the Me Too movement uh, kind of took off in 2019. And there were a lot of uh, accusations, allegations against prominent people. First, they were in academia, in the media, because, you know, to be honest, it's more liberal, uh, like it's more uh, open in those uh, uh, in those uh, spaces. So there were allegations 
against those people. Then you know they then they got expanded. Uh, then there was uh, accusations against like uh, well-known, uh, prominent business people. Uh, uh, you know, uh, journalists. Um, well, I mean, you know, Human Rights Watch has written about the sexual assault, sexual abuse in the Chinese political system. Because uh, if you go to the Chinese internet, you can find a lot of people talking. Uh, about, you know, I got abused by the head of my bureau, this kind of things, but they are almost anonymously because people know that, uh, you know, the people who are most unaccountable in China are the political officials. It's not the billionaire. It's not the, you know, the famous journalist. journalist. It's the Chinese officials. So that's why, you know, this uh, allegation made by Peng Shuai is so extraordinary because she is targeting against the Chinese system, you know, who are, has the most power in China. Yeah, so just taking up on what you are mentioning in terms of the Me Too movement in China, and as you yourself have pointed out, the hashtag that uh, was initially popular at the beginning of November was Where is Feng Shui? But you are um, of the opinion that it should be Where is Zhang Gaoli? Why are authorities not addressing that issue, right, uh, Yacho? Absolutely, you know, it's like, Where is Zhang Gaoli? This guy needs to answer to, uh, you know, to the public and to the media. You feel that this issue happened in a democracy, like this official ha must already have, you know, made a statement, whether it's denying, whether it's admit, that's another story. He has to respond, but in China, he doesn't because officials are untouchable. They never respond to any kind of public, uh, you know, outcry. So that we get so used to it. So I think we need to introduce this this question to the public. Where's Sang Gaoli? He has to answer that. Right. Uh, Jennifer, as you pointed out earlier, you have been through all this. You've been a CCP member. You were uh, charged. You were detained. You were arrested, sent to a detention center, which is basically another word for a labor camp. Could you highlight some of the aspects of what people go through in China when they go up against the system? Yes, actually, uh, as a Falun Gong practitioner, we didn't actually go up against the system. True. When we just did the practice site in the in the park in the morning. The only problem we had is because we had too many members. There were more Falun Gong practitioners than the Communist Party members. I think in 1999, when the Communist Party decided to crack down on it. So uh, since that, I was arrested four times and then sent without a trial. I was not actually tried. It, it is administrative administrative uh, uh, punishment. So a party member, a party secretary, or a leader of an uh, administrative department can write up uh, uh, some kind of labor camp decision and sent me to the labor camp and tortured very, very, very badly there. So I knew this system, if you, like I said, we didn't even go against this system because mm -hmm. it, because the CCP lack of legitimacy. It always feels somebody could go against it, even if you haven't. The, if they fear or they, they thought you could go against them, they arrest you all the same. So that's how dangerous uh, living in China is. So I, I'm really very concerned for Peng Shui. Like I said in my last show, now everyone is calling for her safety. And because of the upcoming Winter Olympic, there is public attention. So maybe they would not do anything to harm her now. But what about after the Winter Olympic, when the public attention dies out and she could be disappeared at any moment or even murdered? Right. Uh, yeah, so there's a comment from one of our viewers who uh, liked your answer, uh, your previous answer. Well said, Yachu Wang, ma'am. Uh, the issue about how much is uh, this really a story in China? Hari Gautam asking this question. How are the Chinese people reacting? Do they even know about this? Because we are talking about international reactions, right, Yachu? Yes, the uh, what's you know the reaction in China and outside China is so different because of censorship. So Peng Shui posted this you know, account on her uh, Chinese social media. Then it stayed for thirty four minutes. Then there was so much discussion about this story. Everybody is talking about. Then after thirty minutes, the Chinese government came in and censored everything. So people start to use the coded language. You know, 
they would refer mm-hmm. uh, her in another way as you know that kind of thing so the, the discussion kind of continued but because the censorship is so overwhelming and got so quickly um you know even the word tennis got censored you can't talk about tennis anymore uh and so i mean the discussion very much died down after you know a couple of days now i don't i I, you know i asked some people who are just regular people in china do you know this and they said oh i don't know Mm. Uh, one of our viewers is putting up uh, the title of your book uh, jennifer Uh, when you're talking about international reaction again the wto ahead uh, simon's uh, reaction was uh, extremely encouraging in terms of saying that the WTA is willing to pull out from, from tournaments in China. But the IOC, uh, Jennifer, there uh, there have been accu- accusations that uh, the IOC, because of the big money and the stature of the Olympics, is pretty much complicit in, uh, if not, f- you know, furthering Chinese propaganda in, uh, in furthering their narrative, Jennifer. Yes, I think uh, the WTA's attitude is the right one, is the correct one. As an international organization, you of course should uh, ask those questions and you should protect the victims and protect Peng Shui as uh, athletes of this international community. But the IOC, I think it is very disappointed. They didn't ask the uh, critical questions like uh, what I, with what we already talked about. Uh, but on the other hand, they were actually cooperating and working together with the CCP. They, was, they were trying to help the CCP to convince the world that Peng Shui is, is, is okay. So they said that they had a video uh, conference, but we never, uh, uh, you know, say any kind of those videos. What Peng Shui said in that video, if you have a video conference, why don't you release any of the video clips of what you have been talking to? Uh, only a photo, I think. Nobody is happy with with that. I think the, the first, um, I think in, in the first place, I don't think the IOC should grant uh, the uh, Olympic to the Beijing because it has it is, has been uh, violating human rights for all these years. Like I said, the persecution of Falun Gong started in 1999, and to date, thousands of people have been confirmed to have been persecuted to this. And uh, maybe there are another, maybe millions of people who were killed for their organs, but nobody were talking about it. The Olympic, uh, you know, uh, authority of awarded with uh, Olympic in 20, uh, 2008. And many people actually, in order to have this Olympic hold in Beijing, many people were uh, removed from the house, their houses were demolished so that to give way to to build up Olympic villages. And uh, in order to, uh, I think, create a so-called harmonious environment, the CCP used so much more effort to crack down on ordinary people. So ordinary people have been suffering and uh, the CCP not only has it has persecuted Falun Gong and then because nobody uh, was asking to have it be held accountable for what it's doing. So it later expanded its persecution to Uyghurs in Xinjiang and to people in Hong Kong. And now it could, you know, start an uh, invasion about, uh, of, on Taiwan as well. So it is becoming more aggressive because the international world I think allowed it and even uh, rewarded by giving the Olympic to Beijing. So I think that that's definitely a wrong di- direction to go. But I'm happy this time at least there are some organizations like WTA uh, are standing up against the CCP. And unfortunately, the IOC is still not. And because of we all know there is big, big money involved in this, I think that is time punishing the actually spirit of the Olympics. Yeah, so in terms of a boycott, let's be clear now, even though President Biden Biden himself has said that uh, the US is thinking about a diplomatic boycott, the UK Parliament, I think, has announced one, Canada, Australia are thinking about, but this is a diplomatic boycott. The Chinese uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs puts out a tweet yesterday or a few days back, I think, 
which claims that you know it's not that they invite foreign dignitaries it's national olympic committees who do that so is this uh, diplomatic boycott a sham well i wouldn't think you know it's a sham because you know the uh, uh because in the past olympics you know the uh any 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 olympics they welcome like uh, government leaders uh you know at I know that uh, because of the COVID-19, uh, you know, the uh, the Chinese government is not going to invite uh, people outside of China anyway, but uh, saying that, you know, we're not going, regardless whether we get invited or not, uh, is, a, is, a, is a way to convey the message that, you know, we, we don't endorse uh, your human rights violations and, you know, not going, not wanted to be associated with the uh, Olympics is a way saying, you know, we condemn the human rights violations uh, in China. I don't think it's a sham. Right. Uh, Jennifer, your views on this diplomatic boycott, uh, do you see it uh, gathering momentum and does it really make a difference? Yes, I think it does make a difference because, they, you know, the CCP, I think they care about its face. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if uh, foreign uh, officials uh, go, go to Beijing Olympic, they would use it and, as a big, big propaganda to, I think, to strengthen that they are recognized by the international community. So they always, because it's lack of legitimacy, it always needs something to a strengthen its legitimacy to convince to Chinese people they are they are doing well to rule China. So I think uh, whatever um, they uh, the uh, government can do, I think a little or, or more, uh, something is better than nothing. Sure. There's a question from one of our viewers, uh, Yachu. Can you please ask uh, the ladies what do they expect from the Indian government and from the Indian people? I don't think there's an, been an official statement on this uh, particular subject or the Olympics. Well, I mean, I hope in, in the Indian government to speak up about uh, the Pengshua case and many other cases, uh, many other human rights violations in China, you know, regarding Xinjiang, regarding Hong Kong. So government speaking up is always good. Uh, then, I mean, as to the, you know, the Indian public, you know, I'm on this show because, uh, you know, I want people to know about Peng Shui's case. I want people, you know, to, uh, to, you know, speak up uh, for her. So I think, you know, the public and the government can pay attention to the case, uh, can, you know, put pressure on the Chinese government is good. Uh, Jennifer, again, as you pointed out earlier, uh, it's good that uh, there are headlines, even if they're not within China, uh, because it possibly is keeping Peng, um, Peng Shui uh, safe, if you can use it, inverted uh, commas, for now. What happens if these headlines go away and what happens uh, in the future, post the Olympics? Not only to her, uh, she is highlighting what's happening within China, but as you on your shows all through these years have been pointing out, there are so many, and Yacho has been pointing out, there are so many others who have also disappeared, the millions of Uyghurs. Yes, I think the international world should definitely keep on pressing, um, pushing this and uh, to call out for the CCP to, uh, I think maybe the fundamental solution would be the disintegration of the CCP. I don't think uh, if the CCP is there, the situation will change for any any better. Maybe sometimes they release one or two, like like a hostage they hold they, they hold to to soothe the international uh, you know voices. Like uh, after the Canada, I think release the Huawei CFO Meng Wanzhou. They re release two Canadians. They re arrested uh, as a revenge. But overall, millions of million people are suffering. Like I said, China has now become a huge prison. Everybody is a prisoner in some sense. Uh, they don't have the freedom to speak out. They don't have even the freedom to go to the internet as they like to visit any uh, website they want to visit. The Chinese inter internet has a great firewall to, you know, to screen everything that the government didn't want out. So 
the whole China is like a prison. So the human rights violation has been going on for years and years and years. And many even very famous people got disappeared, like human rights lawyer Gao Zhishen, like uh, journalist, um, citizen journalist Fang Bing and Zhang Zhan, who wanted to document the Wuhan pandemic. They were all mm -hmm. disappeared or got arrested arrested into in, put into prison and people knew nothing about this and tragedies like this are happening day and night every day in china and i think it, the world really should to wake up to what the ccp is really up to if we don't stop them more people could become a victim yeah, so your comments on uh, the large issue, of course, uh, Pan Kui, uh, we are talking about and her safety and her freedom, but the larger issue, as Jennifer points out, of uh, China being a huge, humongous prison. Yes, I mean, I think, I think there are more concrete things that uh, the international community can do. First, uh, you know, have better policies. Uh, so when the Chinese activists uh, who, you know, escape uh, China, they can resettle in those countries, you know, the Hong Kong activists or just Hong Kong regular people, Uyghurs. I think uh, the refugee and uh, asylum policies in different countries can be much better to help those people. So when people in China know they have a way out, you know, if I uh, speak up against Chinese government, the US government will take me in, then they would be emboldened, they would, uh, you know, are more willing to speak up. So this is important. Secondly, you know, the uh, various governments need to uh, implement sanctions against uh, Chinese government officials who committed human rights violations or against Chinese companies. Some companies are really, really big in, in complicit, uh, complicit in helping the Chinese government, uh, you know, carry out human rights violations. Those companies need to be sanctioned. Uh, so I think there are those are the concrete things that foreign governments can do. Yeah, Chu uh, Wang, thank you so much uh, for giving us your time and your expertise and uh, enlightening us on the situation. Thank you again for coming on Strat News Global. And uh, Jennifer, thank you for appearing uh, on your for your debut on Strat News Global. We hope to have you a lot more. I would surmount to guess that the Chinese, at least, uh, reacting to Peng Shui means that international pressure has worked to a certain extent otherwise they could have covered up this incident completely but thank you again for your time jennifer thank you so much for having me thank you it is thank a pleasure you. to have both of you and just a reminder to our viewers uh, to subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't already done so and if you have then spread the word about our channel as we approach the 100,000 subscriber mark do follow us on our social media handles on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for the latest news and analysis from an Indian perspective. This is the talking point on Strat News Global. I'm Amit Abre.